everybody Lanzer here I'm currently sciencing the JGX 11 and 12 right now I'm sciencing the JGX 11 sciencing really just means trying to figure out all things being equal how does something perform so that's using some sort of establishing some sort of control with which you can test to figure out the extremes of performance so that you can optimize on live devil dogs have been doing this for over 10 years and that's how we optimize a lot of our our everything from airplay to tank play just it's we've had a lot of success optimizing after sciencing and then applying that across multiple platoons for overwhelming firepower and what i've been doing is trying to sight in the jgx 11 on the lightning meaning well i'll just show you I got clued in, if, if you see, my reticle looks different than a lot of my other videos, this kind of colored bar on my minimap and, and the line on my screen. I did not know this existed. So this is part of the recursion tracker. And normally what you've seen is just the, the, the shadow underneath. And that's because a recursion tracker gives you the ability to add that sort of thing to to your gameplay and it's been super helpful for me i put it in one of my quality of life videos so what that looks like here is let's take the crosshair configure it and make it the default so here's what it normally is and in my quality of life when i said that that shadow underneath the dot really makes it to where i almost never lose my reticle now whenever i'm you know, I'm looking across different topography and textures. I can always see it, and it's super helpful. Even there, with the white and the black kind of all together, you can still, I can still keep track of it. But when I posted my video yesterday for testing out the JGX 11, or not, uh, playing it out loud on live for the first time, I got an interesting response. Someone said that I should change my reticule to the JGX 11 and 12 recursion tracker and I didn't know what that meant so I asked them about it and they, they pushed me to a reddit post by I can't recall his name right now but pushed me to a reddit post where someone had made an imgur overlay for the JGX and I put it on and sure enough there's multiple different ones there's this this kind of metered base range based approach to it where you kind of look at how far away you are from something so in this case the colossus is 250 meters and then you track that to 250 meters on your your hud and then shoot and then depending on what dimension you're at is you know how well it works or doesn't in that case i have to go 250 at the top and then Nope, not even 300 at the top of the tank. And there we go. Hit. So I have to increase it by a good 50 meters. Which is fine. On the fly, that means that I am more accurate faster. Whereas before, I was just kind of winging it based on experience in this past 10 years. I had no idea this was a thing. And then the second one is this color coordinated based approach where you look at your mini map and let's take the let's take the colossus for example it's the mini map shows it's on the purple ring so i line it up with the purple and if i have the right setting which i don't then it will hit so in this case i need to go down to perhaps maybe my zoom no even then but not by much there we go now i hit so it's it's not as fast in my opinion because I have to constantly look at the money map and back here but it opens up a lot of new possibilities that just weren't there that I was aware of I might have been the only one but here that's just what it is so what I've been doing is I need to establish a control in order to sight in these things 
these reticles so that I can make it useful on live in real time against people who are moving. But in order to do that, I need to first sight it in, which means I need to figure out what is the pattern of which I am most accurate so that I can then change it on the fly as needed. And I've been pretty much been going through the zoom optics on the JGX 11 for the lightning trying to figure out which one moves the least. And here's what I mean. So let's go to 1.75. I currently have 1.75 equipped. So I need to create a control. And as I create this control, let's make it, uh, let's make a, actually, let's just make a notepad. Let's create a notepad so that I can keep track of my stuff. So I'm on the Lightning JGX 11, and I'm on 1.75 scope. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go out 200 meters. So they're right 200 meters at the base of the cannon. Okay, so now I update my thing at 200 meters using 1.5 so now I need to get my first control which is my third person I think it's gonna hit at teal there we go it hit but where did it hit did it hit at the upper left tire well that looks like it kind of hit in the center mass that's what I want so center mass hit at teal okay so I need to establish I'm using the scope but Third person, center mass hit at teal. So now let's go to first person, no scope. So it automatically, you can see the shift a little bit, a tiny bit. See that teal where it's at the base of the turret? When I hit into my first person, no scope, it, it moves, it nudges it a little bit down and left. All right, so that's my second point. So first person, no scope. And I need to move this out too is reticle move tiny bit down and left let's put this as a note all right so then let's so that's first person or i'm sorry that's third person then there's two ways you can go about this one you can hit right now and then it'll it should it will hit in the same place i just was here but what the control is supposed to be, it's it's to standardize your shot. So what I need to do is now move this reticle up, nudge it to the top right, so that it meets the same place I just had my teal. Then I take my shot. Now that's dead center. So dead center. At teal. And that's interesting, which means I need to adjust this. So low lower center mass hit let's call it that let's just move that out here a little bit okay and this is you just start creating a foundation with which you can standardize your shot so lower center mass oh wasn't in the right spot there it is lower center mass when i move it up same spot dead center mass and now here's the real money which is 1.75. I now need to standardize where I'm going to place this reticle. So putting it 25% of the way between yellow and purple to make that shot is not going to help me out a lot on live when things are going fast and I need to target acquisition fast. So I'm going to move it here to yellow where the teal was. Take my shot and see where it lands lower tire well okay so then in first person scope actually let's put 1.75 scope it's going to be lower left tire well at yellow and it's reticle move mm, moderate amount how much did it move though Let's see so we were here's the teal nope i need to do it from here 
that teal is my control. And then... Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe... Well, I'm going to be switching a lot between. So let's put it here. And then here. So... I had to move it down... A notable amount. Move down notable from third. And how much did I have to move it from from first here down not much again that's right because the reticle didn't move much from first to third no scope by a, by just a tiny bit so if I were to do it here at the base of the turret well then I go into third person I should only have to move it a small amount down which I did and that hits the lower left tire well. So, but if I do it from first person and then I adjust for first person scope, I'm sorry, first person no scope, then I move to first person scope, I should only move down a little bit and then nudge like I would have to do from third to first no scope. If you're following me, then you're starting to understand how Devil Dogs have been leveraging science to optimize our live performance in mass. The problem isn't doing it singular. Any person can do this. It's getting an entire squad, an entire platoon, to standardize your optimization across hours of gameplay on every continent all the time. That is extremely hard to do. You have to distill this down into a way that people can very easily follow along, recreate your steps, and for those who have to deviate, for instance, recursion tracker doesn't work for them, or they don't want to use it, you can still find a manageable solution to get them close, maybe 80% up to everybody else. That is how you apply overwhelming force consistently and win and take confidence. That's what we've been doing. I, I went over that in depth for my combined arms. I didn't go over sciencing to a huge degree, but I did a little bit. This is what that looks like. We have scienced everything from armor to infiltrators to base building to orbital striking a bastion and what grid mark you would hit it to hit all of the points. It's just, it, it's insane. So here, what I'm doing is standardizing my shot so that I can then apply it to a moving target because that's where that's what really counts here things just aren't going to stand still for you you got to be able to f track a target without complicating it more so than it needs to be and when I've been winging it this whole time it's been just that's why you see me miss so much it's because I'm trying to track a target while using the tick marks but these tick marks in 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 real time you can lose them pretty quickly on a target like right now i know i'm looking at my third tick but the more i do this and the more i'm getting bumped and i'm moving around and i have to go from first to third it i can lose that third tick real easy and now i've lost my shot so i have to find a way this color coding makes that a whole lot simpler to track a yellow now I just have to track it a yellow on a fixed point on my target in a way that I can mostly hit most of the time. And that's what this is. So, for my notepad, 1.75, I had to nudge it from third a down a notable amount. I'd like to reduce that nudging down to next to nothing. That way... I can react faster and target acquire faster. All right, I'm not moving fast enough. I don't need engineer for this. So let's go something that is fast. Adrenaline pump. I still need my sweep hub and I still need, I don't necessarily need sweep hub, but I definitely, yes, I do. I need sweep hub. It's target focus. I don't need, but I want it anyways. And then, yeah, I need adrenaline pump so I can go a little faster. Okay. So now, I need to do the same thing for 1.5. I already did two times in 1.25. Those, you have to nudge a lot. So, it was between 1.75 and 1.5 now that I need to zero in on. And that's not even getting to the point of uh, peaking and then, you know, constantly moving back and forth like this. So, let's get to 200 meters again. In the middle turret well. 
Here we go. So then... Still the same thing. Teal. Okay, that's like still lower center mass. And let's make that... Let's copy what we did. So now I'm doing 1.5 zoom. So the third person, same thing. It's going to change though now when I go to first person. So there we go. Little bit of a nudge. Let's see where it hits. It's dead center mass. Okay. That didn't change. It should have though. So what's what's going on with that? Okay. A little bit of a upper nudge. And then let's go third person. Dead center mass. And I didn't have to move from yellow. So that seems to be the winner. Okay. That seems to be the winner. So my reticule, I had to move my reticule a little bit down left. See, I can I can target acquire here without moving and I'll still hitting, but your enemies aren't going to stand still. You have to track them. And the best way to track them is have easily identifiable markers. So that's why this is important. That's why I keep harping on it. So when I move into first person, I need to be able to have a reticle adjustment that is minor that I can still track moving targets with. So that I moved it to my third person from my first person scope, no scope. And now I move my first person scope. I didn't even have to move it and I still hit the target. That is beautiful. That's exactly what I'm after. So it looks like 1.5 scope is the winner here. And did not move reticle. That was awesome. And it was, I think it was up and right. Let's confirm that one more time. Up and right. That is it. That's much more manageable than trying to find ticks. I lose my ticks all the time. And that's why I keep missing at least, you know, half my shots. So now that we've done that at 200 meters, one, I don't need one for two, five and two times. It's going to be worse than one, seven, five. But now that I've done that, let's check out the second reticle. And that's the one with the metered the metered adjustments. This is where we start to science like more meta play style. So I'm man, I really like that. I really like the 1.5 for the for the B color. It's it's simple, it's easy. Alright. So let's kill this thing real fast. And then change the reticle. So let's change it to the second one, which is going to be the metered target crosshair. Cool. I really like the idea of this one. You you point at the target. It's 200. Then you line up with 200 and just figure out where the shot's going to hit. All right. So at the top of the turret is where I need to center mass, which is good. That's cool. Uh, so let's make that my first entry. So this is... Uh, now I need to nest it within color reticle. And this one I'm going to say range reticle. So at one, we're going to start with 1.5 and then kind of go plus and minus scopes from there. So from third person, it's going to be, we're going to stick, we're going to stick at 200 meters. And I'm just going to repeat this just, uh, in case I have to start changing nests. I don't want to lose track of that. 1.5 scope. Third person is going to be... Oh, I didn't put... 1.5 scope. Third person. That reticle was... Uh, dead center mass. Under... Just under turret. Same thing. Oh, no. Same thing. Nope, not same thing. This is going to be dead center, just 
at top turret border. Something that I can look at this later and know what it is the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So now I need to note that this is at 200. No, no, no. That's not at 200. I've adjusted to 200. To 200 meter. Okay. That might confuse me later on, but that, that's how, just how it's be. So I'm 200 meters away, and I adjusted third person fired 200 meters at the top of the turret. There, maybe that's better. All right, next thing. Now I need to do the same thing, first person. So my adjustment's gonna be top to the right, just like it was for a color, let's fire. Dead center mass. That's interesting, okay? So let's do this one more time. Top turret. Where does that bullet go if I hit there? Okay, still kind of like lower center. It's good to know kind of what the difference is. So first person, oop, needs to be scope. That one needs to be scope. First person no scope is gonna be dead center at, at what? At, at 200 at top, okay. At, oh, that's where I need to put it. Here. At 200. Top of. Turret. And it hits dead center mass. Okay. Here. Lower. Wait, wait, wait. I've got myself confused. Third person. Lower center mass hit. At 200. At 200 meters top of turret. Good. This one was. No, that was dead. Center mass hit. At 200 top of turret. Dead center mass hit. At 200 at top of turret. Again. Which has me a little suspicious right now because that shouldn't be the case, right? Still, okay. There should be an adjustment, but I, I can't tell from here, which is fine. That's a good news story. I Something in the back of my mind tells me I need to investigate that a little bit further, but for now, we'll accept it. There should be a difference there, even if tiny, because I had to move the reticle. But whatever, let's go. And then that was... Okay, so then here, move reticle up and right. Yep, that's fine. And it got dead center mass when I hit 200. So now let's go 1.5. What's the nearest one? 300. So let's go 300. What do I got? Dead center mass at 300. So I had to move reticle. Tiny bit down and that was dead center mass at 300 okay so let's leave this squad so 300 bam but let's really assess that movement because that's what i need to account for the most so here i am third person looking at somebody first person Interesting. Let's kill this thing first. Maybe that's maybe the fire is just obscuring the dimensions. It looked like it didn't move at all. I don't trust that though. Let's do this again. Two hundred at three at third person. Two hundred at first person. No scope. There it is. Move down to 300 at top of turret. 
center mass. Okay. But how much did I have to move it? That's what I was trying to figure out. So 200. All right. I had to move it down. Is that a tick? Full tick? Oh, they're, they're not lined up correctly, but... That's okay. Yeah. It's almost like half a half tick. <laughs> not, not, not a ton. Let's do it again. 200. Yeah. So move it down. I'm getting confused on the ticks here. Try this again. So I'm in that, that middle tick for the white, but not the yellow. And then I had to move down to 300, right? I did indeed. So a, so a half tick. But a white half tick. <laughs> okay. But did we... We didn't do that for... We didn't do that for first person, so let's do that again. For... Alright, so third. Center mass. Okay. So that was, that was a tiny bit. So it was a little bit more than tiny for the, the scope movement. I think that's fine. I'll just say tiny. Okay, so now let's try it with 175 and see if it gets worse or better. If it gets worse, then I need to go down to 125 and try that. And then I'll have found my optimized site for this one. I'm not sure which one I like more. I like what both of them are trying to do. It's helpful. This one seems to be faster at target acquiring when I can see them. But the other one seems to be easier because of the colors. It's not easier when I'm trying to take into account the mini map because I have to constantly look back and forth and I lose them when I'm tracking. But when I only look at the center reticle, the color helps out big time. All right, so let's try this out now. We're at 200, right? Try to be. Wait a minute. Why does the range shift? That's interesting. So from third to first, the range changes about was that ten, fifteen? Okay. Anyways, let's go for two hundred again at third person. Center mass. Oh, how much was that? How much of a shift was that? Okay, change. And that, that's a full tick. It's a full white tick right there. And it hit the very front. So not center mass. So that's important. That's an important change. 
So third person, dead center mass, 200 top of turret. Okay. Not center mass. Lower left tire well at 300 top turret. Radical move down one uh, down notable and that's one white tick so I hit 200 Oops. my bad so I hit 200 switch wait a minute that's not right 200 oh I was in third uh, first person scope whoops actually it might be even better all right let's try this again this one's turned out to be a long one but but I'm I don't know I like I, I like where this is going so I'm gonna keep the video going and if you're still with me then cool so 200, that's first person, scope, no scope, okay? So 200, center mass, 200, I need to nudge it up, center mass, what? Okay, might be that one, we'll see. So that was 200, that was a dead center mass. And all I had to do was move my reticle down just a little bit. So I hit there. I just need to move it up a little bit. And it still hits in her mass. Just up. Not even up and right. Just up. And it's at 200. Okay. So now let's do this again. So 200. Third person. 200. Move up. First person. No scope. Still same hit. Now. Third person. Whoa, the closest one is 400. And that's top turret. But if I really wanted to, I could just go half four and then see how that works. So I know 200 is going to center mass hit. So then if I stay at is that a half, 300. Oh, no, that's 325, 375. Okay, so I'm at 375, but I didn't have to move. And it's still center masses. Okay, that's a that's going to be a decision point for me. So when I'm switching between the three of them, I know 200, I'll hit. But when I switch to first person, I just have to move it up a little bit, and I'll hit the same. And then I don't have to... I just have to track above the four. Which is possible. You know, I could above four here. Bam. Top of turret. So, 375. Top turret hits. Top, uh, lower turret. So then this is... No radical move if staying at... 375 400 requires full tick down yep or up up full tick up what was the other important note it hit lower turret so lower 
turret. I still consider that center mass lower turret at three, seven, five. Okay. So, with that being the case, let's create one more. So, if I go to 400, requires full tick up. That's what I want to capture. Okay. That's interesting. Which one do I want to do? Let's try. Let's try at one, two, five and see if that does anything worse or better. We can just eyeball it and know whether or not it's good. So now I'm going to try one, two, five. I might not even need to record the results. Okay. So, 200. A little bit of a nudge. 300 a little bit of a nudge but look at where it's hitting the top so 200 center mass center mass my closest one 300 yeah that, uh, that's a little bit too close to missing for me that's that's one variable I don't want to have to worry about and then let's just try two, although I think that's going to be way worse, but we'll see. Two times scope. What's up, Bo? Super long video, but this to me is well worth the time investment. Because then I can start just applying this and then optimize it on live. All right. So 200. We know it's going to hit center. Let's see here. 400. Huh. So double. But I didn't have to move. Where did it hit though? Center mass. That's interesting. Two hundred. Four hundred. Oh, that's because of the little bit of the nudge, right? But it's the same nudge. 200. Huh. Two hundred. Nudge upright. Two hundred. Nudge upright. Four hundred. Still same. All right, let's go from third to first scope 200 nudge upright 400 hmm. I like that a lot let's record that don't need that oh that was wait the first one was 175. Two times scope for the Vanguard is a really bad idea for the JGX. It is, it was insane distortion of, of the the arc. I I had to compensate like, double the ticks into even where the ticks weren't. Kind of hard to explain with this all this stuff going on, but it was it was bad. I had to stop using it except in very select circumstances. Okay, so for two, it was dead center at two. 
which we know. Nudge upright, dead center. So it's uh, this one. And then nudge up for center. So it was this one. Four hundred. And move it up just a little bit. All right. Bam. Okay, so two hundred. 200 up in the right and then from first to first it's just up but from third to first scope it's upright so that that's pretty consistent it's just a little bit different that's not bad from uh, third to first scope. Move tiny bit up and right. All right, I think you can start to get the idea of what's happening here. Once I sight in like that, then I can start going at range. Then I can start testing behind the, the rocks. But more importantly, my next goal is to test the mini-map zoom in. Uh, especially for the... Uh, for the the color so that's what I would do after this and then after I sight it in and I've gotten consistent at both that's when I would start testing target acquisition here like behind a rock or behind a tree or behind a hill and see which one between this one and the color between the range and the color target acquires better target acquires faster target acquires more accurate and then once I feel I've got that down I go on live I go on live and I let that be the final arbiter and I just kind of the one that feels better is the one that will win so that's that'll be the end of this video that's pretty much the sciencing of it pretty interesting results for the color and the and the range it looks like if I had to guess right now my 1.5 is where I'm going to want to standardize my play. Going in and out of fights, changing the two scopes, 1.5, 1.75. Eh, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like that's where I want to be. But I want to be dead center mass as much as I possibly can. And it looks like dead center mass is where I'm going to get all uh, right, one, 175. I think I'm going to get a better one in uh, 1.5. But we'll, we'll test it out just a little bit more and see. And that's it. <laughs> that's, you know, this one. All right, everyone. I really like the JGX. Big fan. But I'm still... My suggestion is make the arc more pronounced. And when I fire it up, maybe don't make it go up so high. And that way I can really make it an artillery cannon where I'd have to look up and, and try and hit the Colossus, but way up here instead of way out right here. That would make it arty. That would differentiate it from everything else that we have available. Heat, AP, Hesh. I don't really need the JGX. Not really. But if it were an arty where I could hit beyond line of sight over this, over this, and I could do it more like already style in the air that becomes a new play style that could become very value added and that's where i'll leave it thanks everybody